It's April 30th, 2023. The hometown Boston Bruins are taking on the Florida Panthers in Game 7 of the first round. With it being overtime, one of these teams just needs one goal to move on to the next round. It seems pretty standard for playoff hockey, but this isn't just another playoff series. You see, if you asked anyone if they thought this series would ever come to this point, they would have called you nuts. That's because heading into this matchup, the variance between these teams couldn't have gone any larger. When the regular season came to a close, 43 points separated these two teams. The Florida Panthers were the eighth seed who just squeaked into the playoffs with 92 points. Their regular season was filled with massive inconsistencies. Despite showing flashes of being a good team, the Panthers had nights where it made it easy to criticize their play. However, after strong words from Keith Kachuk about his son's team, the Panthers went on a run winning 18 of their last 26 regular season games to make the playoffs. Even though they were far from perfect, the Panthers were catching fire at the right time. On the other side of the spectrum is Goliath. The NHL had literally never seen a team like the Boston Bruins. Setting the record for the most points in a single season in league history, the Bruins were the model for consistency. Almost every single game, the Bruins came at you with fast, mistake-free hockey. With the lowest goals against by a wide margin in the NHL, the Bruins rarely made a mistake, and if they did, they had the best goalie tandem in the world in Allmark and Swayman to shut the door. On paper, this matchup couldn't get any more lopsided. But playoff hockey is an entirely different animal. Despite that, Game 1 went as expected. Boston had some minor hiccups in their own end, but it was nothing to worry about as their strong 5-on-5 five -five play and power play helped them secure the win. However, Game 2 was a completely different story. Florida's strong forecheck gave Boston fits all night long, and a series of costly turnovers resulted in an unexpected win for Florida. That was worrisome considering no one had seen that from Boston all year long, but let's just consider that a one-off for now. Heading back to Miami with the series tied 1-1, that should be considered a successful road trip for the Panthers. Yep, this Bruins team is built different. And in Game 3, they executed in every way that made them so good in the regular season. Strong goaltending, relentless zone pressure, and deadly offensive transition basically led to a Game 3 win. And unfortunately for the Panthers, that same Bruins play would carry right into Game 4. Boston took an early 1-0 lead off a greasy Marshall goal, and Florida just spent the rest of the game trying to play catch-up. Ultimately, this Taylor Hall goal would be the dagger, and the Bruins would take a commanding 3-1 series lead with a chance to close it out on home ice. This is when everything seemed to change. As starting Game 5, the Bruins would get back Captain Patrice Bergeron after missing the first four games with an injury. And even though everything seemed right for a Game 5 win, the Bruins looked uncharacteristically hesitant. The mistakes that popped up in Game 2's loss were starting to show yet again in Game 5. Even though it was a messy game for the Bruins, their resiliency to keep tying the game meant that this was all squared up at threes going into OT. Yet, with 5 seconds left, Boston's Brad Marchand would get a chance to completely ice the series. Marshan has to let it go! Stopped by Bobrovsky at the buzzer! With Florida's series on the line, Sergei Bobrovsky comes up with a massive buzzer beater save. Boston had multiple chances to ice the series right here, but ultimately, a costly mistake would completely change the entire series. Vesna winner Linus Olmark makes a bad decision to play this puck on his backhand right to a Florida forechecker. The Panthers hop all over the mistake and Matthew Kachuk is there to force a game six. Now there are moments in a series that can totally change the psychology of a team. This one right here was that moment for both of these teams. For the Panthers, the hero Matthew Kachuk was insisted on willing his team to success. Meanwhile, the Bruins seem stuck on how they can make such a crucial mistake with the series at their fingertips. This would spill into Game 6 for the Bruins as it was the exact opposite of this team's identity. Wide open hockey, filled with mistakes, and questionable goaltending. You got Allmark being beat clean, questionable decisions with the puck leading the goals against, 
and just flat out missed coverages in the defensive zone. The Bruins had the lead twice in game six, but the Panthers just refused to go away. After finally tying the game up 5-5, the Panthers' relentless forecheck forced to get another turnover, and this loose around in shot would be the game winner to force a game seven. Pressure is a funny thing. With the Panthers playing with house money and the Bruins feeling the weight of the world, Game 7 was a psychological battle as much as it was a physical one. In an attempt to change the mojo, Bruins head coach Jim Montgomery opted to start Jeremy Swayman instead of Vesna winner Linus Olmark. That right there is the sign of doubt creeping into the head of the Boston Bruins. Florida carried the momentum from Game 5 and 6 right into Game 7. And on an early power play, a shrieking Brandon Montour beats Swayman clean 5-hole on this backhand sweep. Not a good looking goal to let in by the way if you're a goalie. It couldn't have been worse for the Boston Bruins as they were missing empty nets, turning over pucks and they just looked visibly rattled. Another turnover from a Panther forecheck would lead to a goal against and all of a sudden the best team in regular season history is down 2-0 in a game 7. Despite things looking bleak, the Bruins power play would get them back in this game. A goal from David Krejci would inject life into the Bruins, and that would be followed by a perfect tip from Tyler Bertuzzi to tie the game. With TD Garden back alive, a rush chance for Boston would create a juicy rebound for David Pasternak, and the Bruins would take a 3-2 lead with 15 minutes left in the third. All they have to do now is hold on. Despite a volume of chances to close out this series, Boston gets one more opportunity to do just that. Draining the clock down to one minute, Florida's strategy with the extra man is simple. Get traffic in front and put one on net. Captain Alex Barkov does just that, and with the Bruins collapsing in their own end, the attempt is blocked and bounces right over to Brandon Montour. Knowing that Swayman is set to stop the initial save, he one-times the rebound instantly and completely stuns TD Garden. After being just one minute away from avoiding a devastating collapse, the Bruins find themselves in a spot in which no one thought they would be in. Game 7, overtime in the first round. After a historic regular season, the fate of this Bruins team ultimately comes down to just one goal. With these two teams being separated by 43 points in the standings, a Bruins loss here would be the largest upset in NHL history. Combine that with rumors of this being a last dance type of season for this beloved Bruins core, a loss like this would be the most bitter way to end an era. After an extremely close series where the margin for error has been so thin, winning a 50-50 puck battle like this can be the very battle that leads to victory. And so, with 11 minutes left in overtime, you're about to witness the worst choke in NHL history. Kachuk keeping it alive. Carlo can't grab it. It comes to Verhage. Turn, shoot, scores! Carter Verhage! And the Panthers have eliminated the Boston Bruins! So, a bit of a longer one today, but let me know what you think is the worst choke in hockey history, and what do you think the turning point was in this series? Do you think it was that brutal giveaway by Linus Olmark, or do you think it was something else? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video and want to see more hockey content, make sure you click that subscribe button and turn on notifications.